Many other tutoring agencies outsource their work to subcontractors with no set structure. Top of the class tutors, however, are employed and trained by our company, which is fully accredited by the Australian Tutoring Association. All our tutors have passed our strictest selection criteria and have been trained to use the most sophisticated learning psychology strategies. Our guidelines are specifically designed to help young learners maximise their true potential for academic success. Our aim is not just to produce learning during each tutoring session, but to train, strengthen and expand your child's learning capacity so that they take in more during school time as well. The way that most tutors out there work is like this, basically one hour's lesson equals one hour's worth of learning. And that is simply inefficient. The reason is because throughout the school week, I mean, there might be about 25 hours of classroom teaching time. But how much of that actually equates to real learning time depends on the student's learning capacity. Now, realistically, most students only pick up maybe 50%, give or take, of what they're actually taught. So that 25 hours of classroom teaching it might only equate to maybe 12, maybe 15 hours of actual learning time. Now when it comes to tutoring, look, an extra one to two hours per week outside of school, well of course it'll, it'll make a bit of an impact. But here's the best approach. Now imagine that you had a really expensive performance car uh, with a clogged engine. So your car would be very important to you, of course, so you would expect uh, a competent mechanic to, to fine-tune the engine so that you get maximum efficiency and, and performance out of every single mile that you drive, you know, from the time that you take it from the workshop until the time that you come back for the next tune-up. Well, likewise, what our tutors are trained to do is to turn that one to two hours a week into a fine-tuning session, I suppose you could say, for, uh, for the child's learning skills. So that now they actually start to soak up more learning during every lesson throughout the school week as well. So even if we increase the child's learning capacity by as little as say 20-25%, which depending on how many tutoring sessions they have throughout the week, is realistically possible within several months, certainly under a year. How many extra hours a week of classroom learning could that potentially translate into for the child? Now if done right, we could be looking at an extra four, five, maybe up to 10 hours of extra learning per week that they now start to take on board. And to do that now, of course, our tutors need to follow a very specific approach when it comes to their lesson plan strategies. And that approach aims to train the cognitive or thinking aspects of the mind and the emotional or feeling aspects of the mind to work in sync so that now students start to take in more and actually create a deeper meaning out of everything that they learn. They start connecting the dots, you know, faster and more efficiently, but at the same time feeling driven to want to learn more. So that now uh, the usual motivational blockages, you know, in their confidence that would have otherwise held them back, now they start, you know, gradually breaking through those blockages because it's on the other side of those blockages. That's where they need to be. And we know now that we're in, when we're in a state of mind where we're, we're feeling confident and enthusiastic about what we're doing, the chemistry of the brain actually starts to shift. So it allows us to, to take in more and even remember things more clearly. And that's the state we need to be in now to engage the higher order thinking gears of the brain. This is like when you're uh, trying to drive up a steep hill, you know, and you have to shift down to get the engine revving harder, you know, get those pistons firing faster. So what's happening now is the engine is producing more energy a greater output and that translates into more speed and power to get up and over those hills. Well likewise our mind is capable of using uh, deep thought processes such as analyzing, evaluating and creativity. Uh, but we really need to get our brains pumping harder in order to shift down into those gears. In fact if you look at assessment tasks and especially the HSC it's really those higher order thinking skills that they're looking for to differentiate the ones who do end up getting up and over the hills and the ones that get left down behind. So now that we understand how to specifically train a young learner's emotional response to go from you know, distress through to, to boredom, then a bit of interest and then eventually enthusiasm and then finally that level of confidence that we really want them to have. It's like modifying the engine so that now it's fitted with a new turbocharger as well. You know, that's when you can expect to see a child's performance suddenly just boost forward harder than ever. It's where we see students who uh, previously were struggling to keep up, now they suddenly start making up that lost ground. They start making progress faster than they ever even realised that they could. 
And in the process, they usually start to discover hidden talents that they didn't even realize that they had. You know, they start to even notice themselves feeling a certain passion, you know, for things that they didn't even realize that they liked. So that's how we take whatever level that they were performing at and really, you know, boost their ability so that whatever they thought their limits were, now they start soaring above and beyond that and they just keep looking forward. I mean, think about it. Imagine if you could help them boost their little learning engines to expend an extra 10, 20, maybe even 30% more horsepower, you know, when it comes to what they're taking in at school and the success that they're starting to achieve. When you start to see that happening, it's, you begin to see their confidence and their enthusiasm really starting to shine. That's the thing that parents start to notice the most. And when they tell me about that, the thing that I always ask first is, okay, how does their future start to appear now? And the answer is always, when they think about it, a lot brighter. You know, and as parents, look, it's natural to worry about your kid's future. It's, in our, it's instinctive. We can't help that. Um, but before I, I mentioned the analogy of the you know, expensive performance vehicle that you really want to take care of and look after, and the reality is, look, it's very easy for us to fall into the trap of getting distracted by you know, superficial stuff, which in the broader scheme of life probably doesn't really matter that much. Um, but I think as a parent, deep down, what we want most is to know that if, if we can secure a, a, a bright and successful future for our kids, that's the most important thing.